Hi guys, in this video we're going to be talking about discrete random variables and specifically we're going to look at the probability distribution of x here as I've defined it. <clears throat> x is the number of car accidents for a US male from 20 to 25 years old in a given calendar year. And for this discrete random variable, x can take on these specific values. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're limited to these choices. <clears throat> so clearly this x that we're discussing here is a numerical variable. And the number of accidents that a male 20 to 25 gets into in a given calendar year is a random phenomenon or you could think of it like almost like an experiment, a random chance experiment. Therefore, x is clearly a random variable, right? So wh what makes this a discrete random variable to, to define it a little more uh, specifically? Well, x can only take on a finite number of values. So as you can see, x is like a count. Zero accidents, one accident, two accidents, three accidents, four. Clearly a finite number of choices for the values of x. And on top of that, notice that there is a, um, there's no 1.1 or 2.0 three accidents or 3.7 there's a finite number of accidents okay anytime you're dealing with a count it's it's a discrete random variable okay <coughs> excuse me okay so this table over here is the probability distribution I purposely left one of the probabilities out that's gonna be these are gonna be the questions we're gonna ask answer and that's gonna be the first question we're gonna fill in. So what's a probability distribution for a discrete random variable look like? Well typically it's presented in a table like this. So this is the probability distribution. It shows all, all the possible values that x can take. So that's in this row here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are our choices for this phenomenon that we're talking about. This chance experiment. Okay, And below each possible value you have the associated probability of that value occurring for a, for a given individual, for a randomly chosen t male 20 to 25. That's the probability that they'll get into zero accidents. That's the probability they get into one accident. And this is the probability they get into two accidents, three, and then we'll find out what four. I made these numbers up so it might seem a little funny that probability they get into three accidents is very high okay but let's just roll with these numbers okay they make they don't make a, they, you'd hope they don't make that they're wrong and I just made them up so rest assured okay so first question so these are the five questions we want to address here is to just answer some basic probability questions off this table first off these are the possible outcomes as we've discussed for this random phenomenon. So the probabilities for all the outcomes should add up to 1, right? It's one of the basic properties of, of a probability distribution. So what we need to do to get the probability, this is written, this is read, the probability that x equals 4, OK? Is we need to add up the probabilities for the other events. Okay, and then subtract that sum from 1 and we'll get the probability for that x equals 4. <clears throat> okay, so in Excel I can do this. I could do equals 1 minus and then I'm going to sum the other four probabilities and I get 0.2. Okay, so there's a 20% chance that a randomly selected male from 20 to 25 will get into exactly four accidents. All right, so let's also write that here. Let's fill in our table. So here's our probability distribution completed now. <clears throat> okay, and let's just make sure that this row of probabilities adds up to one. 
using the sum function, I see indeed it equals 1. Okay, so I can get rid of this now and get back to the questions. Second question, what's the probability that x is greater than 1? So greater than 1 is 2, 3, and 4. So these are just outcomes, right? So we can simply sum up the probabilities that qualify under this event, x greater than 1. So that includes 2, 3, and 4. We simply are going to sum their probabilities. So equals sum. You could do this with paper and pencil as well. Since I'm doing it in Excel, I'm going to use Excel functions as well. So I'm summing up the probabilities of 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so there's an 88% chance that a uh, randomly selected male, 20 to 25, will get into greater than one accident. Now, let's do this one, and I purposely put question C right after B so that we stress this point. What's the probability that X is greater than or equal to 1? So notice this right here. Okay, there is a difference between this guy and this guy when you're dealing with discrete random variables. Okay, so what qualifies under this question? This event, X greater than or equal to 1. Well, certainly 2, 3, and 4 are greater than or equal to 1, but also 1 right greater than or equal to one so we need to sum the probabilities for these four events in this case okay so I'm summing the probabilities here all right so equal sum again and this time I'm summing these four so indeed you see there is a difference and this is a point I want to stress between the probability that X is greater than one and the probability that X is greater than or equal to one as we've witnessed here Okay, and that's always the case when you're dealing with discrete random variables. Okay, now fourth question we want to find the mean of x, the mean of the probability distribution or the expected value. So let me write this mean or expected value of x. Okay, now in order to do this, this is the formula. So to get the mean of x, you'll recall from your text that you're going to sum across all possible x values. So this is the sigma notation here. This means to sum. And we're going to sum all possible x values. <clears throat> And what we're going to do is we're going to take each x, so for example, 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So that's what I mean by all possible x values. We're going to take each of these x's and multiply it by its own probability. So this is the second thing I just wrote here is saying the probability of x. So what does this say? Take the first x value, multiply it by its probability. Then when you've done that, add that to the next x value times its probability. Then keep doing the same thing until you've gone through all the x values, each time multiplying the x value by its probability. So this is kind of like a weighted average of x with the probabilities being the weights. OK, so let's do this in Excel. <coughs> so equals, we take the first x value times its probability plus the next x value times its probability plus the next x value times its probability plus times its plus last times its probability. And we end up with 2.8. So 2.8 is the mean of x. It's the expected value. It's what you would expect 
on the uh, 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 the next uh, randomly selected male, 20 to 25, you would expect around 2.8 accidents. Okay. Of course, he can't have 0.8 of an accident, but the mean is not necessarily have to be a valid um, value from your from your distribution. It's leaning towards three if you want to make that distinction. Dix distinction is between two and three, but it's leaning towards three. Okay, but we keep that 2.8 that decimal because it means something to us, and we're not confused by the uh, 0.8 as being like 80% uh, of an accident or anything like that. Okay, so that's the mean. Next, the variance of x. So to get the variance, it's also using the sum notation, all possible values of x. And this is a little bit more involved. So all possible x values. What we're going to do is we're going to, in parentheses, we're going to take each x value. So let's say we start with that one. Subtract its mean, which is over here, which you already got in the last case. And then square that difference. Okay, we're going to do that for each of these guys. Of course, the mean doesn't change; it's always 2.8. It's only the x's that are going to change. And then, after you square it each time, you're going to multiply this squared difference by the probability of that particular x. Okay, and sorry, this equals the variance. Sometimes we use the subscript of x to make it perfectly clear. And we use mean of x. That's a subscript x over here, okay? Just notation, so we know we're talking about x. Just in case, sometimes there's a y or another variable, it's clear that this is the mean of x and this is the variance of x. Okay? So let's do this in Excel. So we got to be a little more careful, use more parentheses. So we start equals, open the parentheses. We take the first x value, subtract it away from it, its mean, close the parentheses, square that difference, okay? Then multiply that by the probability, okay? Then plus open the new parentheses, the next x value minus its mean, which is always 2.8. Square that difference, multiply that by its probability. The third x value, open parentheses, minus its probability, I mean its mean, same 2.8. Square that difference times its probability. <clears throat> plus open parentheses and continue this until you get to the final x value okay be careful with parentheses and hit enter <coughs> perhaps we'll show a couple extra decimal places just in case uh, it's exactly one. How interesting. Okay. Let me just check this. Is that's so rare that you get something something like that? Let me make sure my parentheses and everything are correct. I'm gonna add some extra parentheses just to be sure I didn't make a silly parentheses mistake. Okay. Yep, it's one. Wow. I just randomly made this example up and we ended up with a variance that's exactly equal to one. All right. So this is a presentation with through an example of a discrete random variable and its probability distribution. We answered some questions about probability. 
We also got the mean or expected value of that distribution and the variance. And you could also get the standard deviation, as you know, by taking the square root of the variance. Okay, so in this case, just one again, right? Square root of one is one. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Be sure to subscribe, check out the other 200 plus videos on my channel, many of which cover basic statistical concepts and give you visuals on them that uh, should help you to better understand those concepts. Um, Till next time, comment and share. Have a great day.